Thank you for joining me here today. My name is Kevin Siever. I'm an experienced, trusted lawyer since 1991, successfully fighting and winning against the Department of Children and Families, what Colin referred to as DCF. Throughout the entire state of Massachusetts, whether you're in or out of court, we turn negatives into positives. Step-by-step -step approach. Today, I want to talk about Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin had many struggles. At the age of 10, she lost her mother. Two short years later, at the age of 12, she had her first child, born out of wedlock. She was married twice, had two husbands, and had two divorces. She had multiple sisters sing in her backup band, and they died of breast cancer. Aretha herself died of pancreatic cancer. But her legacy and the superlatives that you'll use to describe Aretha are off the charts, as were her 20 singles, number one on the R&B charts, as was the 100 R&B songs on the hot charts that no other females ever had. The fact that she was the first female to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1987. That was preceded by a Lifetime Achievement Award in 1984. And in 2005, George W. Bush gave her the highest Medal of Honor to a civilian called the Presidential Medal of Freedom. In 2011, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame again honored Aretha with a honorary doctorate from Case Reston Reserve, as well as they gave her a performance of a lifetime with a show that was outstanding. That night, she also sang with Dennis Edwards of The Temptations, Ron Isley of The Isley Brothers, Jerry Butler, an incredible soul singer. All three of these individuals were in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. She also sang with a former backup singer who helped her with all of her hits by the name of Sissy Houston, who also happened to be just the mother of Whitney Houston. One of my favorite stories about her, though, is when she had a lesser known musician. I never heard of this person by the name of Jordan Johns, and perhaps you haven't either. He was a Toronto musician, and his band was requested by Aretha to be the warm up act before one of her shows one night. And at the conclusion in the encore by Jude and John, his whole band came off stage to be greeted by the entire band of Aretha Franklin as they shook each of Jude and John's members of his band's hands. Talk about a sign of respect. But if there ever was somebody who earned the right and deserved respect, it was Aretha Franklin. She not only gave it, she showed it to everyone she came involved with. Aretha Franklin didn't make music, she embodied it. Take the song Respect, which originally was written by Otis Redding. She made that not only hers as a massive hit, but also a feminine anthem, which today is as loud and clear, as effective and as powerful as it ever was back when. Because if you want respect, Aretha would say, you gotta give it. And that's what you've gotta do when you're dealing with DCF. Like Aretha Franklin, you must give respect. So when you're doing a DCF case, Give the DCF social worker, the supervisor, the ERA program manager, the ERA clinical manager, the ERA director, and all the DCF staff respect. Without it, you go nowhere, and you will not be successful in your case against DCF. If this video was educational and informative, please share it with your family and friends. Be sure also to join my subscription to my YouTube channel for other videos to help you successfully fight DCF. Thank you for watching.